This is the ZMAR Podcast. Elite Benefits of America helps small and mid-sized companies with their health insurance programs. And now, your host, Butch ZMAR. Today we're going to talk about some responsibility that could cost a lot of money. So uh, I'm going to start off with... Uh, a cliche recruiting, military recruiting speech story. Uh, Some of you probably have already heard this. This is not original by me, but the concept's there, and um, it'll lead into today's podcast. So there's this um, recruiting event going on at a high school, and they brought out the armed um, forces to give a speech on basically why the high school graduates should actually sign up for their service. They started the day off, and then there's no particular order except for the last one that, you know, the the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy get, get up, and they give your, their two cents of why, you know, the world is great. Obviously, go Navy for me, um, you know, sail the world, but obviously the Air Force and the Army have their take on things, and they give this big talk, and the three um, services, so the Army, Air Force, and Navy, used up all the allotted time, and so when the Marine is ready, they said, hey, we're actually out of time, but if you want to save a couple words, you can go ahead and squeeze it in. But uh, the other guys used up all the time. And uh, and it's actually probably pretty typical for real life, too. But So he walks up to the microphone, and he looks around the room, and there's dead silence. And he puts his head towards the microphone, and he just said, nobody in the room can handle being a Marine. Of course, the story goes that the... The Marines had the most recruitment out of that graduating class. Um, And so sometimes uh, less is more, but maybe, right? But the opposite is true where there's times where you have to invest more time, which is what the other three guys were trying to do. But with related to benefits, um, I'm going to relate it to financial stories that could pay off big by investing more time. Um, There's a a newly published book. It's an industry book, um, meaning written by uh, one of my peers in the industry, uh, by the name of Alan uh, uh, Wedholder. Um, and if he's listening to this podcast, I'm sorry if I mispronounced the last name. I actually have not spoken to him um, as of yet. So, but, uh, but I'm giving him kudos to the book. It's called Cheat It, uh, how you know the healthcare system has cheated the not only the American dream, but the employees that work for these companies. I'm still in the middle of it. It's a good, uh, great book. But there's one thing that I want to talk about, um, talk about shortness of time. He uh, talks about... Him assisting a broker, an insurance agent, advisor for one of these, you know, accounts. It, it sounded like it was a larger account. Um, uh, I don't know how many employees it was, but it was definitely hefty and premium. So therefore, it was probably over a thousand employees. But they sat in waiting room and it passed the meeting time that was scheduled. They're sitting there waiting. So finally, they get called back, and they're thinking, "Showtime, right? Like, let's show them what we could do." And so they get in the room and the guy turns around and says, "Uh, you got 10 minutes. And in the story of the book, he just says, is that all we got? Okay, well, how about this? Uh, Just go call your current broker and just tell him to increase your deductible and pass on more premium costs. We're done. I don't 100% agree with it, but I get the concept because, you know, what is 10 minutes really going to do? In reality, it's a joke that the CFO or whoever they're meeting with that even just was not willing to invest that kind of time um, to make it work, right? And so um, how much can you get done in 10 minutes? Especially if you sat down and actually went through and say in 10 minutes, um, maybe for a smaller employer, there was ideas presented on the table that maybe there was $10,000 a year in savings, and that's a huge impact to the bottom line for smaller employers. But what if it was like $10 million in savings, right? And obviously it's a huge number, Uh, But let's just say it's $10 million over a five-year time time frame, right? Is that worth the investment of more than 10 minutes? Uh, It's going to take more than 10 minutes to figure out how to reverse that trend and get that premium back down and have control of the cost. What is that worth giving, right? In fact, this guy that only gave um, these guys in the book uh, 10 minutes should be fired. So whoever is listening to this and is connected to that company and it rings a bell with you, just fire your CFO for even considering that 10 minutes was enough uh, just to get it off their desk. And I'm going to walk through why, because it's actually going to cost the employer even more money if they don't do what they're supposed to do. In a recent article with, on CFO.com, um, they, it was a article that talked about five steps to for CFOs um, that should take to mitigate workplace misconduct. 
I'm taking this article and actually transfer into a current law that employers need to know about. And so um, I'm not, uh, this article had nothing to do with that law. I'm just using the concepts that were put in this place for the five steps to mitigate these issues. Um, and, and sure, I'm using them to my advantage, but there's a valid reason I'm gonna walk through because you could avoid lawsuits with it. But the article actually started out talking about lawsuits, right? So it talked about that the, there was an um, increase of responsibility, and then they didn't give specific dates on this one, but McDonald's um, shareholders sue the C-suite for lack of fiduciary responsibility. It just reinforced the responsibility in the C-suite for addressing, not addressing the misconduct. Um, they do mention a date in 1996 that Caremark, um, uh, the board, uh, sued the C-suite and essentially because oversights of accountability, um, which included the executives, right? So there's a handful of issues that are going on here, and this is dated, right? This is not current on these lawsuits, right? That's why I'm going to transfer it to some other information that's current. So CFOs are now encompassing additional risk is what the article was portraying. So they have to mitigate this risk and take responsibility for it. And they did it in five steps is what they're referring to. So the first step is uh, they refer to as enhancing due diligence um, during the hiring process. Uh, so basically vetting the people so that work for you are better. Robust reporting mechanisms. You have to be open and transparent related to um, anything that you're trying to do in the workplace so that things can be mitigated when you start seeing behavior changes. You're going to make priority of internal training and workshops. And so this is important because now you have to enforce a new code of conduct as well as expectations. And so this is obviously important because you want to set the bar so the employees could follow the culture, right? You have to create some type of framework for number four, right? And that includes any association or dealings that CFOs have to work with legal or HR or some type of talent acquisition. You have to develop the framework in most cases. And then five, foster the culture of accountability. Obviously, accountability uh, is important, and the only way it really gets impacted throughout the company is by creating a culture around it. Or you can do the opposite, create a culture of covering up the messes, right? So create a, a culture starts from the top, you promote the accountability, you take responsibility yourself, and you just make it a culture throughout the entire company. Obviously, it's going to take some time, but it's certainly uh, worthwhile in the end, especially when C-suites are becoming uh, responsible and can be um, sued for it um, from board of directors or anybody because there's going to be um, litigation that's coming down the pipe, especially in the benefits world that I'm going to get to. So obviously, to give credit towards CFO.com, this article was specific about misconduct in the work, workplace, but uh, operations as a whole. So I'm going to tie it to the benefits and where it's going to come in because there's a new law that's coming down the pipe that employers are going to be more financially responsible. Otherwise, they're, again, sued and penalized. It's called In 2021, it's called the Consolidated Appropriations Act. It's probably the most significant compliance challenge for employers since the Affordable Care Act. It expands the fee disclosure responsibility. That includes us. We have to disclose our fees. Uh, they're basically um, on demand or uh, we're supposed to do it within a certain time frame as well. And so, uh, which is good. I think, you know, if you hire a consultant, you know your fees are, right? You're paying for us one way or the other. It's in the premiums. It's just that you don't get it broken out. Uh, you just It's just part of the package, which is a disadvantage to us because then people use and abuse us because they're not financially um, having skin in the game. But but this expands that financial or the fee disclosure, um, and not only just for retirement plans now, it's going to include the healthcare providers as well. Plan re sponsors will have financial uh, fiduciary responsibility going forward. Um, they're on the hook for all the fees, um, and they're responsible to make sure that they're reasonable. In a lot of cases, this is going to be delegated to the broker. And which is fine. There's a lot of trust and loyalty with brokers, but um, the employers at the end of the day are going to be responsible. If that broker that you currently hire and you have trust and faith and they've been with you for 30 years, they're reading all the books, reading all the materials. Um, if they make a misstep, well, of course, we, uh, you know, we do the best we can. And it's just like lawyers and accountants, there's you know, 
there's always outliers and then there's, you know, some things that were overlooked or not disclosed. Maybe the employer withheld information, but but delegating the broker and just putting it off your desk is not going to be the answer because you're still going to get penalized if it comes down to it. You're going to t- need to take a financial responsibility in this. Um, and you should have all along, right? So you get an increase. It's 15%. It's a blanket increase. Cost of services, I'm quoting here, if you can see my hand quotes. But um, cost of services in an area have gone up. And due to trends in medical, and I'll make you know it's some type of verbiage related to this, that yeah, basically, this is why we need to increase your premiums 15%. Your broker goes back and says, all right, I renegotiate at four points. So now it's 11% increase in, instead of 15. So he's pounding his chest like the big hero and saying, I did my job. We have no idea how they lowered it by four points. No idea. It was just more as simple of, hey, let me call my buddies. Let me get a little rough on them. Man, let's see what they do. We do good business with them. You're a good client. Let's see what we could do. And, and no basis, right? Like we have no idea what how they even come up. What if they they came back and increased it by four points, knowing you were going to come back by four points, right? Like we don't have any disclosure or information on this, but we take it as fact, right? Face value and we don't do anything about it. Well, guess what? Employers are now at risk for getting sued for not asking for that data. Uh, you will be financially at risk because it's your fiduciary responsibility to your employees to make sure that you're charged a reasonable fee and why, right? So you could justify to the employees or even a board of directors, why are you play, paying this much for health care? If you could show a report, uh, it makes it a lot easier. The sole benefit of this is for the employees, right? So make sure the fees are re- reasonable and it applies the benefits as well as any retirement planning. Listen up, Butch wants to give you your own elite benefits playbook. And it's absolutely free. From business strategy to benefit strategy, every step from the start through implementation, account setup, and open enrollment, working through service requests and the process of renewals, a valuable look at your company, your insurance options, and how to make the process easier on you. Go now to EliteBenefits.net slash playbook and get your free Elite Benefits Playbook, or give Butch a call today, 708-535-3006. So what does this all mean, right? So employers are in a new responsibility for benefits, premiums, and fees, right? So, uh, or you get fined or sued or some combination of both, right? For years, employers, including CFOs, just put it off, right? It's HR's responsibility to put together the package. The HR level really does not have any financial incentive to manage a benefit package you might have some that go way above and beyond and help with that area but it is not their responsibility and they know that what they're trying to do is save their employees and save face and then be reasonable to keep their job right so if they came back to you and said hey i got an idea that could save us you know four hundred fifty thousand dollars in the first year without jeopardizing any benefits they would say you're insane if that was the case my our current broker would have told us that right well, obviously, that's not the case. And if you're not doing your homework, you wouldn't know. And so um, and you're just blind faith. Right. And just imagine that if you own a company and your team is um, blindly letting a healthcare plan be overcharged you by four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. How do you how does how do you sleep at night? Right. And so I'm going to tie it back to the CFO.com article. So let's talk about due diligence when hiring, right? This includes your broker, right? Or the CFO you hire, internal or external, right? The broker uh, and the CFO need to get on the same page on this at the same table at the same time, and you got to spend more than 10 minutes in this. In fact, it should be um, probably a reasonable amount of time, what, 15 to 30 minutes per visit, and you need to have multiple visits, um, if not longer, because you need to get this right to save 400000 right? And so, um, and then you may not save 400000 So that's my disclaimer. I'm just using these numbers for informational purposes. You know, your number could be $25,000 a year. And if you're big enough, maybe that's not an impact. But if you could reverse the trend by $25,000 a year, what if you find something else next year that's an additional $25,000? Now you just reversed it again. And so it's not just one and done. It's not just blindly let's set course and then it's supposed to correct itself. No, you don't do that with your own company, right? Uh, when's the last time that you set and forgot marketing efforts? When's the last time you set and forget employee engagement or just employee offerings or or just their place in the workplace? You got to engage the employees to keep them productive. Why wouldn't you 
keep engaging your benefits plan that now you're financially responsible for. Second thing, robust reporting. I've been talking about this for a while now. Does your plan actually produce you a report, a financial report to show you where the numbers are going? And if it's not, I'm, my big question is why not? These fully insured plans that a lot of our employers are on, uh, just by default, uh, and then also across America, there's large employers still on a fully insured platform for whatever reason, they're going to be responsible for providing this data. How much data is going to be the question, right? Is it going to be enough for you to actually feel comfortable with that fiduciary responsibility now, especially when you know other companies or other spaces um, that are offering benefit plans that provide more data? Um, how does that make you sit if you're financially responsible for that and you're not getting all the information? You need to make a move and you need to make it now, especially now going into the renewal season. If you're not talking about this, you need to make a plan. All right, the third one, pri uh, you're going to make a priority to train uh, or provide workshops for your employees. Your responsibility is to the employees when you provide a group employer um, group sponsored um, benefits plan. So how do you control your costs? You're going to be resp financially responsible. If you let your employees be unresponsible, go out and make any claims, it's going to cost you more in the long run. And that's the part that you're financially responsible for. So what about employee engagement, right? Talk about any type of training or workshops that give them more information about how to make these claims. How does the claim process even work? Why do I need to go to um, the hospital for a testing that could be done at a local clinic for a fraction of the cost? How about employers step up to the plate, put packages together that you could send your employees to places where there's no cost for them because you pre-negotiated or we did or our industry has pre-negotiated contracts with certain facilities all over the country to allow the employees to go and not only get the higher quality of care, but actually reduce the, um, the plan responsibility as far as claim payment. And in some cases, just eliminate the out-of-pocket expenses for the employee. So now your employee goes through a rough patch health-wise. What kind of impact does that make to your employee where they're not shelling out $1,000 here and $1,000 there? Um, how does that kitchen table conversation go at home when they're not financially in debt because of a medical claim? What does that do in the workplace where an employer actually did their job and help minimize or eliminate out-of-pocket expenses when their family's in a health crisis? So what about medical management uh, services, right? There's services out there where instead of you having to worry about getting involved or, or your employee taking time off or during the workday using your um, paid time, to do research on how to manage a claim form. So instead, provide a benefit package to provide medical management services so you could, they could call and have somebody else help them out, right? You're paying a service fee. That way they can call them even off hours, but even if it's during a day, it's really to collect information so they could do work while that employee is being productive. And then the employee doesn't have to worry and dwell on things because they're not sure where to go. It's already taken care of. You're going to teach them how to use the health plan, right? Instead of using a deductible, use a copay, right? Instead of going to ER, go to the urgent care. There's so many different ways to save money on the bottom line. It is your responsibility now, or you're going to be fined or sued, or both. The fourth one was risk management framework. And so uh, risk management benefits is no different than workers' comp or commercial. You have to put framework in place to for benefits to operate with inside fiduciary responsibility. So you need to have a benefits compliance program to keep you in, in, in check. Keeping your team in check, right? That includes your broker, your third-party administrator, um, administrator, TPA, your stop-loss carrier, which is nothing more than just your insurance company that's behind the scenes, your HR, CFO, right? What kind of framework are you putting them in to make sure that you maintain fiduciary responsibility on the group health insurance plan? And then the last thing is create a culture of accountability, right? So be responsible. It's your financial risk at this um, point. So um, what are you going to do about it? And that includes having this conversation with your broker. Are you going to vet the broker better or ask them the questions because now you're financial responsible? You have skin in the game now, and it could be by tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. So you need to own it. So I'm not saying you need to replace your current insurance agent, consultant, I'm just saying that you need to do some vetting process to make sure that they're still the person to be talking to. Uh, there's plenty of advisors out there going against um, the grain, um, so to speak. Uh, the grain meaning traditional transaction of health insurance. So what some of us call the status quo broker. Um, they're going against them by 
showing you ways to become fiduciary responsible, showing you ways to how to cut costs and get ahead of the trend, showing you ways to minimize or eliminate your employees' out-of-pocket expenses at the time they need it the most, and then get them access to highest quality care without jeopardizing um, anything in between. So otherwise, you'll be find your suit going forward. It's part of the new law.